Hello, welcome pen friends. It's been over a year since I did uh, Chris's top five pens. In fact, it was August of 2020 when I last did that. And back in December of 2020 and on into all of this year, 2021, there's been a new pen brand in my life that kind of rocked my pen hobby. So some things have changed since then and some have stayed the same. So before I get started, I'm going to list, I'm going to let you know what my top five pens were before so that you'll have that uh, little refresher. And I'm just going to tell you the first, my top pen was Twisby Eco. And then number two was uh, Lamy Safari. Number three was uh, the Twisby Gull. Number four was the Jinhao X750. And number five was the Moonman M600S. So uh, there hasn't been a complete turnover at all but there have been some pens that just got like you know now they don't get as much attention because of the new brand that came into my life in december so uh last time which was august 2020 the two honorable mentions then were the gen how 159 which is is the the heavier wider pen well well i'm not going to get pens out yet i just <laughs> if i start doing that this early on it'll be trouble and then uh number two honorable mention was moon man mini the wankai uh, the original one. So here we go. Let's see where we're at today. Now this wasn't easy because it was a little bit tough. I had to really think about it. Um, but let me go over some of my criteria that I used in, in my uh, uh, thinking about it. First off, I really choose pens for this that are that I truly use the most. You know, even if I have an attachment to the beauty of a pen, it's not going to get chosen for my top five unless it's truly uh, being used um, the most you know these are the pens that I just use all the time and uh, with most of them I have multiples of each uh, it isn't just one and that's how I can tell that I really love a pen is when I <laughs> I want more of them um, because I don't do that with every single pen of course so it has to be like daily use they're the heaviest used uh, they have to be really reliable and they need to be affordable which there was a little bit of a, a hiccup in that as far as like I did have a windfall in January of 2021 so when I start talking about this new brand that captured me this won't be uh, month to month in my budget to to get pens uh, from that brand but I'm really glad that I had a chance to and that I, uh, I'm sure these pens are going to last for years and if I really, really want more now, I'll ha be having to save up for them and, and, you know, hang on to pen allowance or, or channel money long enough to get another one. So um, I always want to be able to swap out the nibs or I want to have enough of them uh, that if they're affordable enough, I can have them in, in the various sizes that I want without having to swap them. And I do that quite often on a piston filler if it doesn't have an easy to swap out nib. And I'm talking about easy for me because for other people it's easy anyway, but I'm a little bit chicken liver when it comes to uh, pulling a Twisby feed out. I, I've said this many times and it's still true. <laughs> it's still true. So, you know, I want them to be smooth and I want the pens to be available. Uh, I don't really like it when pens are limited because that doesn't fit into my normal buying habits at all. It, it, it disturbs things and it makes me uh, have to shuffle money around or something like that. So uh, those are just a few of the, the criteria. Uh, one of the other things I noticed that influences me quite a bit is ease of use and care. Um, I really like pens that aren't too complicated to take care of. And at this level or at this time, in the hobby i've been back in the hobby about five years it's things are all getting easier now because of just repetition but okay but without any further ado so for 2021 um we see a repeat on the number one spot uh number one spot is still occupied by the twisby eco i use these pens every day every day without no matter what because they are my primary bullet journal and journaling pens and i have um four of them at all times that rotated and different not always the same ones um, I've got one with green ink one with purple a red one and then I put the the white rose gold right now into this protected side in my little knock Tallulah so this is daily use and um, I think I added it up and unless I had a stray somewhere I think I have 11 Twisby Ecos total and uh, 
I have kind of set a, a cap or a limit on myself for that. I have a pen case that holds 24, and that is my Twisby pen case. So I've told myself it, it's going to be one in, one out from here on out. I'd like to do that. It's just sort of a little game, but that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And then I also, I pulled out two of my other favorite finishes. Um, actually, my probably my top favorite finish is the black and rose gold. I absolutely love it. And I do have this in a medium nib because the medium nib is the one I use the most in, in the Twisby Eco. And then I love the purple. I actually have this in, in uh, 1.1 stub and in the medium. I just adore those. Um, so that's the first one there. That hasn't changed. So that's interesting. But next we get into the pen brand that just you know, blew the lid off uh, of my fountain pen hobby the same way Twisby did when I first got into the hobby or back into the writing with fountain pens. And that is uh, the Opus 88 brand. And number two is Opus 88 Omar. I fell in love with this pen and it's an unusual thing. I had to really sit down and think about it because I also love um, another one of theirs, and we'll get to that one in a minute. This is uh, somewhat oversized, and it does have a number six nib. The nib units are, are so nice because they come, let's see if I get the right one here. Uh, I was just gonna show you. Yeah, okay, so this is one of them. Uh, they, they come in a screw-in uh, nib unit, so it's super easy to, to make each pen really versatile. You don't have to, feel like uh, you've got to have three of these. No way, you just uh, switch them out so easily. But I do, <laughs> I do have three because the first one I fell for was this one. It's the uh, Omar in the yellow with that beautiful green. And as soon as I saw this pen, when uh, Elisa from Van Ness uh, was featuring it, I could just see my color verse uh, supernatural in it. And I, I mean, I just, I, I just fell for it really hard. So um, the other one that I got in this same finish is the clear one because I started to really talk to myself like, you know, um, that was windfall time and that doesn't happen that often. So I told myself, you better, um, you know, get one that will, you'll be happy with, with any color ink. And that was when I got this one. So I've got the three and I, I'm really, really happy that I did make that investment. I, I love them all. Um, I've got favorite inks for the two. Uh, I mentioned the Colorverse um, Supernatural in this one. And then uh, the Purple Rain by Monteverde is my favorite for this one here. And they both have broad nibs right now, but I do have a stub and I have a medium nib unit for these too. So, I, you know, I didn't want to lock myself completely in. Um, so that just, it, and it surprises me in a way that such a large pen, it, it does take up quite a bit of room in my, uh, either my rickshaw um, hand rolls, but they do fit in there. They fit right in the hand roll. And that's really a, a plus because when the pens don't fit or they're too long or something, that disturbs me. And they fit in the Knox Sinclair too. So number three pen, uh, this is another one that stayed. This is a survivor, I think people call it. Uh, the X750. The Genhow X750 is my favorite of the Genhow pens. And it, it's stayed very, very steady. And it's, it's real consistent that I reach for these. These are probably my very favorite uh, non-demonstrator pens. They're, they're beautiful to me. They really are. Um, I pulled out a couple of more. Actually, my three favorite or this pink one is my new favorite, but then I, I love the purple. Uh, it's a, like a nice dark purple with the silver trim. And then I also love the, uh, the it's a blue marble swirl. And I do keep a uh, 1.5 stub on that one. I just, I just love them. So it's, it pleases me a lot that I haven't uh, lost my love for those pens because I did put quite a bit into getting uh, Goulet nibs uh, for them. And I still really, really love them. So, okay. Then number four is, uh, the Twisby Go. I just, I can't, I, I love it. I just love it. And I particularly love my two that have the broad nibs. Those are the ones that are 
Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that, that orange ink is really pretty. I have them in use almost all the time. And if I remember that I don't have one in use, like I just cleaned it, then that's just like an invitation as far as I'm concerned to go get it and fill it up because I, I love how so many of the inks uh, just do super well in these. And these are just lightweight and affordable. And, you know, I do have a, a stub and a medium and one fine nib one which I don't ink up that often <coughs> and I'm thinking that's going to be one of the sacrifices because I've got that 24 pen case full so the next time I see a Twisby that I want to purchase <laughs> the Twisby go with the fine nib is probably going to go so I don't know what else I could say about that I I just love them and uh, that is well the Twisby go and one other pen which I haven't got to yet are the most affordable on this uh, this list here. So next up is another Survivor pen, uh, the Lamy Safaris. I still love them just as much as I did in the beginning. And uh, this is a relatively new one to me. This is the Terra Red. Uh, I don't buy them. Um, I'm not tempted as much to buy these as I am like the Ecos. And I know that's because it's just super easy to change the nibs. And uh, I've gotten colors that hit just right. Like I, I got, I was able to get that purple Lamy Dark Lilac one. Um, and let's see, then I got uh, an All Star, which, you know, it's not the pen I'm talking about. I really do prefer the matte finish Safaris, but I do love this color. This is the Vibrant Pink All Star and basically the same body and everything else, but, uh, it's not a safari so and then this one was gifted to me and it is a uh, purple one and I love that one too there I have a lot of inks in that uh, magenta and purple range that go with it and of course my first and favorite um, the Lamy Vista that I've worn the letters off of you know I, I consider those all in the same category so so that was number five now I did choose two uh, just like before uh, honorable mentions and then I got a bunch of other ones that I have to talk about because I was a little bit surprised that I couldn't quite weave all the pens in that I, I feel a, a great affinity for. So the first honorable mention is the first Opus 88 that I was gifted, which is the Opus 88 Colero in uh, the red finish. And I have just a little bit of um, Ferris Wheel Press Algonquin... Mm, I can't... I can't think of the name of the ink. That's awful. Okay. Handy ink helper outer here. <laughs> That's terrible. I've had it in there so long probably that I'm just, I may not even be able to find it. <laughs> it has been a long time and it's really done well. I'm determined to finish the entire fill. Oh yeah, that's been since the last book. Oh my goodness. Algonquin maple maybe? I'm just guessing now and I hate to guess because I make an idiot out of myself every time I do. Huh. Gee, how long ago was this? <clears throat> a couple months, I guess. Anyway, I'll have to put that in the comments. I always do. I will outline the precise, everything I showed and the color name and everything. Well, it was a long time back. Huh. So I'm just determined to find it. <clears throat> and I'm not going to find it, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'll put it in the comments, but it's definitely Ferris Wheel Press, and I believe it's the Algonquin Maple. Beautiful ink that goes with it so well. Okay, and then the second honorable mention, which I think this stayed exactly the same. Yeah, it did. Uh, this was the second honorable mention last time, too, is the little uh, Moon Man Wonkai Mini. And uh, I often put a broad nib on these. This one has been cleaned out, but the one that I'm... Um, that I'm rolling around here somewhere that I'm writing with right now is the the all clear one and I've stained this one so much with um Bunga Box Lamont and uh Sailor Acabe that I bought another one because I was really I was sad that I stained it and yet I'm going to do this over and over because I'm going to keep one of one or the other of those inks in this at all times I I just love it it's so handy and I carry it around in a little rickshaw um sleeve that I got for it. It's an extra short and it's just perfect for it. So, um, yeah, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't quite, <laughs> uh, 
bump this pen. I, I love them. I, I love them to death. And they're, they're just so um, reliable. And that's what I was going to say. Both the, uh, all of the Opus 88 pens and the Moon Man Mini, they're just so reliable as eyedroppers that it, it continues to amaze me. I don't get any spilling. I don't get any funny business at all. And they're trouble free. So that has been so nice. It has such a large capacity. Well, it, they all do. Um, and I've, I've got other, the other one that I wanted to show you too. So the Colero and the Omar and the Demonstrator ones, uh, which I tried and tried to work this in, but this truly is, uh, Another favorite, but didn't quite make the top five. And, and uh, it's so interesting because <coughs> I had them all laid out. And I was like, wow, you know, as soon as I look at it, I knew that uh, definitely it's up there in my mind. And, and I'm surprised. So what I really love about these, uh, I have two of these demonstrators that um, will take the Pilot Parallel nib. And that is so much fun. I'm having a good time with this one. Uh, this is the 3.8, and then Pen Friend Marilyn sent me another um, Pilot Parallel, so I'll be able to put one on this one, too, and maybe use some green ink. So I had uh, a couple more, even though I know this is probably going to turn out to be kind of long. I had a couple more pens that I just wanted to make mention of. Um, let's see. I think the first thing I wanted to do was just, just sort of mention the ones that got... Um, they got dropped because that was that was a bit sad since I still love the pens. Um, one that got dropped was the uh, Jin Hao 159. I'm just don't find myself reaching for it as much now that I also am reaching so much for the Omars. And I think it's competing pen space, you know, pen, um, <laughs> pen, what do you call those things? pen roll, pen case space. It's like, it's real estate is what it comes down to because heavy wise, they're, they're very similar, even though this is a metal pen, but this is a girthy pen. So it, it interferes if you have too many girthy pens at once in your Sinclair, especially. <coughs> and I'm just thinking that that might be it because that also takes a, a number six nib. It's easy to swap out. They're super affordable and I have a bunch of really pretty colors. So I hated to, I hated like heck to, to uh, knock that off of the, the list there. Um, and then the other pen that got knocked off, I have two of them. It was the, uh, the Moon Man, uh, let's see, M600S. And I have, they're right here, the, the Tiger's Eye and the purple one. I still love these pens, but definitely, you know, I'm, I'm just not reaching for them as much now that the Opus, like, I think really I'm, I'm reaching more for this one now. The Opus 88, um, Colero. So, but as I was doing this, I thought, mm, but I want to ink up that tiger's eye. Yeah, definitely. So you know how it is. We start looking at everything that we have and then maybe I'll do better with my next pen rotation. Let's put it that way. Okay. So those were the only two really that got uh, dropped and then everything else just sort of rearranged and, and uh, <coughs> got woven in there. Uh, let me make sure that's right. Yeah. It is. Everything else was just sort of a rearrangement of order. And I'll put that all in the description box. So the pen that most surprised me that it didn't make either the top five or the honorable mention was a pen that I do still reach for a lot, which is the Twisby uh, VAC 700R Iris. I love this pen. I love it. It was gifted to me uh, about the same time as the Opus 88 was. And after all, I am a Twisby girl. The thing that I, I think about this is I love the finish. I absolutely adore the, the color on the band and the, the uh, clip and the nib and around there. And I love the nib. It's so smooth. It's a broad. It's my perfect nib. But I don't like the filling mechanism. And that is the thing that would probably have me never purchase another vac filler. Um, that could change because I think, you know, this is kind of early on. I mean, I know people that have been <laughs> in pens almost as long as I've been alive, which that's a long time, believe me, um, or at least 30 years. And they probably feel more comfortable with, with, uh, vac filler, but I'm still getting used to it. 
getting used to getting a good fill and I don't I'm too lazy to go watch video again just to remember how to do it and <laughs> that kind of thing and then when I go to clean it I get a little bit um, but I love the pen and and I was like wow how can it be that that didn't make it I don't know <laughs> but I, that doesn't mean I don't love it and, and it's almost in use almost constantly so and then I've got three pens that are that are kind of new on my scene that um, I knew they wouldn't make the top five or the honorable mentions yet but I did want to mention them anyway <laughs> because you know I haven't gone over 30 minutes yet um, of course the Twisby Swipe which is the first um, cartridge converter pen by Twisby and I and I love it I just I love it I love everything about it it's going to be super for reviewing it's just amazing um, it can be taken apart you know you can clean the converter completely and I just love it I got the broad nib on this one and the medium nib on the smoke one <coughs> but I haven't had it that long so that doesn't surprise me that it would definitely not replace like the Lamy Safari or or anything else there but okay then the other two I'm gonna have to look this one up to see but this is a fountain pen revolution pen um, fountain pen oh my goodness what am I <laughs> and I have the um, the fountain pen revolution ultra flex extra fine on it and that nib is really taken my interest I, I feel like a, it's a race car or a way above me but I'm <laughs> I'm getting there um, on this pen I'm not quite there yet but with that same nib on the noodlers Ahab which is the other one that I've been reaching for more and more with that um, ultra flex nib that's a game changer so that's really really a lot of fun I'm a little bit you know um, intimidated about it though because my writing doesn't look that great with it yet and, and it just it comes down to practice <coughs> and setting aside time for practice versus just writing and writing so okay so I was gonna well, I'm gonna reach for my water sorry about that my water was so far away I was gonna knock down the whole camera um, so I just wanted to say I kind of thought as I was finishing this I thought gee I'm kind of boring I only had really two turnovers two big changes um, I'm the same way in a restaurant I order the same thing every time once I know what I like <coughs> you just can't get me to change my order so so with that being said what pen do you think I should try um, between now and like a year from now what what pen uh, would you like to see me try and maybe I'll be able to try it out um, it's so interesting because sometimes it feels like other people uh, know what we should be writing with more than we do <laughs> and I find that very funny kind of silly but but yeah almost all of these pens let's look at them again um, the Twisby Eco the the Opus 88 Omar, the Gen Hao X750, uh, the Twisby Go, and the Lamy Safari, and even the Little Moon Man Mini. I've got multiples, at least three, um, and that, that really always shows me that I love them. And the only one I don't have multiples of is the, uh, the Opus 88 Colero, but I love it. I do love it and I was thinking about it I thought I was looking at all these and trying to see what was in common and of course it has the little number five nib just like the Twisby Eco and the Go so and and the little mini so that's four out of the six that take the smaller nib and that's really interesting to me it just happens that that's what it is and then of course the Lamy is a, a whole different thing that's a proprietary totally separate Lamy nib and then two of the my favorites of course the x750 and the uh opus 88 omar have the number six nib i always have at least a couple uh, of the larger the number six nibs going oops put them back in the wrong order so this is really fun because it is nice to widen our <coughs> our view and just kind of take a look at uh you know what, what are we doing uh, you know <laughs> how have things changed in the last year and really not since Twisby did anything change my uh, my hobby so much as the Opus 88 pens I really love them they're top very very top of what I'll spend for a pen though 
um, you know, uh, the Colorados are, are like 93 maybe, and then the uh, Omars are like 120, it's right in that range somewhere, don't quote me, but so they really are, they're at the top, top, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take really good care of them, let's put it that way. So, I would love to hear from you what you're writing with, what's your favorites, if you have had any uh, pen that came along, either pen or pen brand, either one that has like swept through and, and really changed you, like made you reach for a different, um, you know, writer, daily writer or workhorse or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Uh, most of my pens work really hard, but, but since I have so many, I'm not as good at rotating them as I'd like to be. That's why I do the monthly Chris's Inked pens, because it does kind of encourage me not to use the exact same, at least not the exact same pens, at least pick a different finish and color <laughs> each month. So um, I try. I really do try to do that. So... That's it because I've talked too long already, but I would love to hear from you and that question I had like what what pen um, You know, would you like to see me try or do you think I should try? Um, I was just watching a video uh, the other day and it was featuring a, a sailor pen I've never tried any in the sailor line But there was one in an entry-level price level and I can't remember the name of it. I've got it written down in my little <laughs> My little book, because if I didn't have my little, uh, it's right here. It has to be. It, it it has to be really close to me or I forget everything. Let's see if I can pronounce it. It's in here. So I was looking for it. Um, Sailor Le Cool. Uh, it was in, on uh, Heldon Wright's, her uh, video about that pen. And I didn't realize the Sailor made one in my price range, really. So... Anyway, okay, I, <laughs> I promised I was going to leave. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I really enjoyed doing this, so hopefully you got something out of it or some kind of encouragement, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Bye for now.